Hey y'all, welcome to Adventures with Aggie brought to you by the Ryan Martin Foundation. Today we have Alan Davis on the show. He's also from Disability Sport Wales and he competes in shot putt, discus, and athletics for Team Great Britain. He's going to tell us all about his journey in sport and what he's been working on during his last few months leading up to the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics. Please welcome Alan. How are you doing today? I am good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much. I'm excited to meet you and learn more about all the awesome things that you've done. Um, but first, could you just kind of give us some background on who you are and what you do? So my name is Ali Sean Davis. Um, I'm a Welsh and Great British para-athlete. Uh, I compete in the shot put, uh, the F63 and 42 category, which basically means people who don't have the function of one leg through the knee and low or and above um, or um, amputation. So uh, we're a combined class with anything really that's affected from above the knee. Uh, we are all competing against e each other. And uh, yeah, shot put is my speciality. Got it. How, how did athletics become your thing? Like, how did you find shot put to be your sport? Uh, well, as you can tell, uh, I'm, I'm a bigger lad um, and I started my sporting journey in swimming. Uh, my brother was a swimmer um, and being the younger sibling, you always want to beat, beat the older one. So, uh, yeah, I, I kind of naturally drifted towards swimming. Uh, no idea about the world of para sport. Um, so just to quickly give you a brief description, uh, my disability, I was born uh, without my right leg being fully formed is called hemelia um, basically i don't have the foot the lower half of the leg uh, the ligaments the muscles everything on the right side um, and that's affected right up to the femur and into my hip um so yeah i i kind of had you know lots of operations um so being in the water non-weight bearing because my leg is so weak um I felt like everyone else um, and I was as quick, if not quicker than a lot of people too. So yeah, I, I, you know, I kind of drifted towards swimming because of my brother, um, but uh, you know, I always struggled uh, at being, you know, not having that function of the right leg. I was always, uh, you know, starting to slip behind the top people and I was never as quick as my brother. And he went on to represent Great Britain. And um, I think when I was about 13 or 14, my mum found a disability swimming club uh, called Bridgen Sharks um, in my old hometown um, and um, he, my mum said you, you know, would I like to go along uh, I wasn't really interested in first because um, I've never really seen myself as disabled or with a disability and um, being a young teenager and how times are different now I didn't want to be associated to being disabled at that age uh, back then so you know, after after a bit of nagging and and asking, yeah, I went along, um, and you know, it changed everything. I walked out onto the side of the pool, and there was lots of people like me, um, and people with more severe disabilities than me, and it, it kind of just opened my eyes entirely. Um, and of course, when it comes back to the sport, I went from losing and getting in the mix to all of a sudden being on a level playing field and winning. Um, and I quickly got up to Welsh national level swimming. Um, but, you know, I had my eyes open to this whole new world of para sport. Um, and there was a lot of talking about me and what I could do. And maybe swimming wasn't the option for me. Um, you know, I was more of a submarine than uh, anything else. You know, <laughs> I, I wasn't built for that. So, uh, yeah, I was kind of recycled uh, to an extent where I was given the opportunity by Disability Sport Wales uh, to try loads of different sports um you know rowing and cycling and, and and the list goes on um but i came across track and field um it was you know i, I loved it i loved the fact it was running there was jumping there was throwing there's so many different things going on and it was it was a body management you know it was all about you and how good you were um and how well you could be as, a, as an individual so for me it was perfect um you know i uh, naturally drifted over to the to the throw in being a bigger guy didn't want, didn't want to be running laps any anytime soon um and i loved the jumping and whatnot but the throw in for me i picked up a discus um and i threw it out of the field i was asked if i've done it before and uh that's where 
the kind of journey started, um, I was asked to go along to a uh, disability athletics club. Um, I've been Cardiff um, and the the DSW Academy at the time it was. Um, I was trying, you know, the, all the throwing events. And after about nine months, I was representing Great Britain at the junior level at the age of 14. So I, you know, I, I, they kind of, I kind of found my hidden talent in throwing things about. Um, and for me, it was just a, a long old slog then for about five or six years, winning and dominating the junior scene before then progressing up to the senior level. That's that's awesome. Thank you for kind of setting the stage. That helps a lot kind of going through. No worries. No. But I I will say first thing, swimming is hard. Swimming <laughs> is a really hard sport. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I am no swimmer. I am no swimmer, but I'll do it sometimes just for working. Yeah, out. I th- it's so hard. Definitely. And I think that's what kind of um, one of the other things as well is, is, is no offense, all the respect to swimmers, but the, the training is boring. It's repetitive. The lane, lane up and down, up and down all the yeah. time. I know they do S and C and stuff as well on the side, but the, the repetitive uh, of just going up and down the lanes, it just didn't appeal to me where, you know, athletics, I was outdoors, I was indoors, I was in the gym, I was doing plyometrics, you know, jumping, lifting weights. There was so many things, you know, I, I loved it. There's so many, you know, I was never bored. There was always something to do. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I think, I mean, not that I could do shot put if I wanted to right now. I don't think I could be any good at that, but I will say <laughs> it looks fun. I think that it's just a fun sport to watch. I was watching the women's, I guess, was it really late last night? Before yeah, I've just three. been watching it now. Yeah, it's so fun. It, I I don't know how they do it, but it makes me so yeah. excited. <laughs> it is. And, and I think when people come down and get even closer and then they feel the shot put for themselves and try and throw it and then try and throw it as hard as they can, um, they're actually in awe because um, it, it is, it's very technical, you know, the, you know the, and they're, they're usually very big humans that are almost like ballerinas trying to stay in this tiny circle and throw this big heavy ball as far as they can. <laughs> yes, I remember. I was so excited once I found that I was interviewing you because I have about, I don't know, maybe one day's experience of shot put when I was in <laughs> the fifth grade like really small we're all no like, one else would kids. do the event yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> they like they said we need somebody to do this and i was like okay so like of course i tried it because why not i was i don't even think i made it like maybe three meters like it just kind of it was like up down like there was nothing there <laughs> but i have it was fun i loved it i I was really, really bad, but it was still a fun experience for me. But um, I guess kind of going off that, can you explain how it's scored and kind of some of the technicalities? Because I think you're the first person to do shot put that I've had on the show. So I don't think my listeners know anything about this yet. But uh, (laughs) yeah, could you give us some background on the sport? So, you know, shot put is... Um, it's the same as format as every other thrown event, the javelin, the discus and the hammer. Obviously, they're technically very different and the implements are very different. But the the basic, the basic is whoever throws the furthest wins. Um, you do, in the shop, you have a tiny circle, which is about two metres, uh, or just under, sorry, um, and you have a stop board that points out into the sector V, uh, which is obviously where you have to throw in that V, not outside, inside it. Otherwise, it's a foul if it's outside. Uh, you'll have your lines out, whatever measure uh, measurements they've put out that day, and then it'll always be like the world record line that everyone's hoping to see get smashed every time. Um, but yeah, then, obviously, they, the, the, four, the women throw the four kilo shot put, um, and the men throw the 7.26 kilo shot put. So, um, yeah, they are very heavy implements, but um, there's two type of legal techniques at the moment. You have the linear glide where they'll stand at the back and almost shuffle across. You know, the, the, it's a pretty simple, powerful, technical, consistent technique. Um, and then you have the spin technique, which is what I do. Um, very American based technical. L. We're all the big throws, the world records. I mean, America leading the scene on shot put at the moment. Um, and you have the world record holder, Ryan Krauser who pretty much is perfection when it comes to technique. Um, but um, yeah, that's it. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. That's that's why I think I love lots of track and field events because you don't really have to have a background to understand how it's or what's happening, I guess. it's No, no. And it, I think it, it, if you buy into it, um, they can be really exciting. I mean, well, you know, the you look back at the last World Championships, 
the best event was the men's shot put because you had you know three of the, of the four furthest throws in history and in that final it was it was incredible to watch and I think people buy into it and they uh, you know it, get, it gains respect for sure for sure so how did you land that shot put why not javelin or discus or a hammer or something <laughs> else <laughs> so I actually do the discus and the shot put and okay, a long story sh- yeah long story short I was basically a discus thrower. That is where my heart is. It always will be. Um, and I won my first Paralympic gold medal in 2012 in the discus. Um, and I am and, and several or oh, nine world titles as well. No, several, seven world titles as well. Um, you know, I will record holder. I've very accomplished in that. And unfortunately, it was taken out of the Paralympic Games. Um, and the reason for that is... You know, it's, it's a tough one. It's almost like an unlucky dip because the Paralympic Games is there to give the highest stage, um, the biggest accolade you can achieve as an athlete. Um, and they want to have the opportunity for as many women across many categories, as well as men and as many categories. So you, it caters to every disability. Um, and I, I understand that because you can't have, you know, 100 options for so many um, categories. And um so they tried to pick the the most competitive, most exciting events, I suppose, um, uh, where there's like a good number of nations across uh, the world competing in it as well. And, um, you know, there's only, for example, in my shop, but there's only one Paralympic uh, athlete from Luxembourg in track and field. Uh, and he's in my shop at event. So obviously, if it wasn't my shop at event, they they lose a country. So uh, my shop at event is a, is, a, is one of the key events at the moment, but, and they, they kept that one in. So my focus kind of shifted from the discus, um, went into the shop put. It's been a very very hard journey because I'm not the best shot putters, but um, I've kind of made myself that way. <laughs> that's that's like crazy competition. If there's one other person that's in your in your classification that's wild that's so exciting though and way to adapt i think everybody's favorite word this year and years before is adapt to the circumstances and i guess that's exactly what you've done from discus to shot put now yeah yeah it's uh, i mean i still i still you know i haven't picked up a discus in three years but i'd love to think that i'm going to again when i get the opportunity but at the moment obviously shot put is where everything is and i'm enjoying it you know i've i've found my own unique way of uh taking the event to a place no one ever thought it would you know I'm paving my own way at the moment so you know there's lots of trial and error and you know we've had some big jumps and so, some massive step backwards as well it's uh, it's frustrating and uh, I'd say 95% of the time you almost want to throw in the towel um, but you know you, you keep going out here and uh, those moments when it all comes together are certainly worth it definitely definitely totally agree with you Um, Cool. I want to shift gears just a bit, um, talk about something different, then we'll jump back into kind of Tokyo things and all that exciting stuff. But first, somebody on my team wants to know, how did you get your nicknames? (laughs) (laughs) Do you know what? I've had I've had a lot of uh, nicknames over the years, but um, I've never really been confident enough to kind of live by the alias. But um, (laughs) I think when I was younger, my first world championships, yeah, I was. I walked into my the call room, and I'm, I'm this uh, 14 stone or 15 stone, uh, 18 year old, <laughs> um, ready to compete against some of these big 30 year old monsters who are double my body weight. And uh, I remember the South African who was the old world record holder pointed and he said, "Oh, see that kid? He's, he's the puppy. You know, he's 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 the future." And I was like, and I and I. You know, I took it and I come away with the bronze from that championships. And that winter, I, I kind of found a self-belief. You know, I, I, mo- I moved away from home. I went to university um, and I kind of reinvented myself as the bear. You know, I thought I'm not going to be a puppy anymore. I want to come out and fight fire with fire. And uh, I knew knew my potential. I knew that I could I could do things they never could. And I, I wanted to catch them up fast. And, uh, you know, between 2010 and 2012, I certainly did that. <laughs> definitely definitely that's an awesome story though i love that <laughs> pushing pushing yourself whether you wanted to or not it was going to happen <laughs> yeah exactly exactly more often there was like no it's not going to happen but you know i somehow dra- you drag yourself there and uh you know when even when i was in that first round in 2012 i hit that throw i went into the lead i was kind of shocked that i'd done that <laughs> that's crazy that's so fun though <laughs> i love it 
Cool. Um, one more kind of, I guess, different question, then we'll jump back into Tokyo. But um, you became a father over the pandemic. That's so exciting. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, how was this adjustment and still training for well, Tokyo at the same time, right? Yeah. So uh, my daughter arrived actually in um, September 2019. Um, right, right before, and I and uh, it was a, you know, it's been the craziest journey because we we kind of at six weeks old. I wanted her to, you know, I wanted them to come with me to the world champs. It was kind of like, why not? Let's go. Uh, so we went to Dubai. We won the world champs. Um, she was only six weeks old, and then we came back and we moved. We we moved house, and then the pandemic hit, and we moved into a house that needed complete renovation from top to bottom. So much work. Um, and we hit a pandemic and we were, it was, everything was shut down. And, um, yeah, you know, here in, in, in the UK, we, we went fully, fully locked down. Um, yeah, I, uh, it was tough. We all of a sudden were not allowed to go to the gyms, tracks, anything. Um, but Tokyo was still going ahead. So all of a sudden it was like, OK, how do I kind of prep myself? How do I train in my garden? and be contender for a gold medal in the Olympics in a, in a few months' time. You know, I, it was panic station. So, you know, luckily my first job, which wasn't the plan, converted the garage into a gym. Um, and I built a throwing circle in my garden and throwing, and I, I put um, a cargo net up between two trees uh, so I could actually throw into a net in my garden and, and keep my technical throwing, you know, to uh, you know a certain percentage there. Um, and then obviously a month or six weeks in, Tokyo was postponed so it was kind of like thank god for that um and I took my foot off the accelerator for a few months just enjoyed kind of the time I weren't going to have with my family um and you know it, it was lovely um but then obviously things didn't really move forward here in the UK um we we never really came out of a lockdown entirely um we were always in some sort of lockdown so nothing really happened for me you know, it, it, you know, I had to kind of just keep focusing and um, hoping that the light will somehow appear at the end of the tunnel. Um, I kind of started to just focus on, what, you know, the positives. And, you know, I kept ticking over and kept you know, reminding myself, you know, I would have been you know, in America prepping in Arizona now. You know, I wouldn't have seen my family. I would have been competing here. I wouldn't have seen. So I was trying to remind myself, this is, you know, these are good things. These are good things. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, and you know, things have slowly kind of creeped out and we're, we, we are here now. We're happy and we're healthy uh, and uh, I'm back doing everything. And I'm itching to go. I'm really itching to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's so exciting. Doing all those things with, with a baby at home. That's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, she's she's been an absolute gift, a blessing, uh, giving me perspective on any, everything if I'm honest you know it's made me realize I'm more than kind of just this thrower you know I'm I'm, I'm Ali the dad now um uh, daddy running around daddy this um uh, and you know on the trampoline one second swimming in the pool the next you know it's 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 hectic so uh it's, it's forced me to kind of have structure time management kind of when I'm training I'm 100% there and, it, and it's, it's it's made me a much better athlete um, and I'm excited to see and kind of show everyone what I can do as well. Definitely. So what are you most looking forward to for Tokyo? Obviously, I think we're just excited. It's happening, right? It's, it's here. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. It's, you know, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a slog five years for me since uh, Rio, you know, and Rio was very, obviously plan came together in Rio. We, we did the job and now we got to go again five years later. And it's just, it's been such a long builder. I'm, I, like you said, I'm just happy. I, I think everyone's happy. It's just happening. And hopefully, fingers crossed, nothing, because things are changing very quickly, as you know, um, in the world. So hopefully, you know, things are still going to go ahead and everything runs smoothly. But um, I think it's going to be very challenging speaking to athletes that are out there now, Olympians and, and some other friends. And, you know, it is going to be nothing like we've ever encountered before. And it's going to be, you know, not the, the Olympic experience everyone usually has. So um, if I can get in and out uh, healthy, that's the main thing. Uh, that's the priority. But, you know, it's at the same time, we've got to remember it is the biggest show on earth. It's the Paralympic Games. You know, it's, it's the biggest stage. So, you know, it's, it's impossible not to enjoy that. And I'm sure Tokyo, you know, are going to do the best they can to to put on every the, the best show they can. And 
I'm looking forward to just going out in the stadium, if I'm honest. Like, nothing beats being at the pinnacle of your sport. You, it, it's an, an energy you can never kind of explain to someone unless they're there. You know, you're, there, you're out there, you're against the top eight, top 12 in the world, um, who are the best from all map, corners of the planet. And you're going out there to see who's the best of the best. You know, it, there's no better feeling. There's no better feeling. I totally agree with you. I'm not there, but I feel it too at home. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited to see it happen and kind of be a cheerleader for all of the awesome guests oh, that I've had on the show. We appreciate that. From yeah. the other side of the world. <laughs> but yeah, I guess um, kind of a follow up to that. There's obviously, I don't know, I was going to say a few months, but it's really only a, a few weeks before everything starts happening. Um, but do you have some kind of sporting, I don't know, motto or philosophy or something that kind of keeps you going, like pushes yourself? Yeah, I mean, if, I'm actually going to Japan in 10 days, so it's not long for me. I'm actually heading out quite soon. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I'm, I'm 30 now. Uh, I've been competing at the highest level for minimum 15 years. Um, really haven't lost competitively since 2012 in the shot put. So, you know, I've been at the highest um, pinnacle you can be at for, for a long time. It's draining. And I, I think one thing I always share, and I'm very keen to share it, is that, you know, I've had some ups and downs and, I, you know, sometimes it doesn't go to plan and you think it's the end of the world. Um, and sometimes, you know, you can you can land on your feet and everything does go to plan and, and you think the grass is greener and you think you deserve more. So, you know, I'm always, I'm always you know, trying to remain humble. So for me, my, my message is never let a loss go to your heart or a win to your head, you know, whichever way you want to flip it. Never let a win go to your head or a loss to your heart. It's um, so important. Definitely, definitely. I think that's... That's a good motto. I, like, I might take that. Is it okay if I, I steal it? <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. You steal the message. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's see. Just a couple more for you. I wanted to ask one specifically about Disability Sport Wales. Um, just what makes this organization important and special to you? Obviously, they're the reason why we're here speaking right now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what makes them so important to you? Um, I think Disability Sport Wales has um, been you know, with me every step of the way on my journey and my career. And um, they were there at the most important time, which is the start. And seeing their contribution to disability in Wales, it's it's incredible. Um, and they are very successful in providing opportunities, um, you know, promoting equality as well. Uh, pretty much every athletics club now caters to para-athletes in, in Wales, which is awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, there's no way where you can't go with is an opportunity for someone with any disability here in Wales. And uh, I think that is very powerful and a, a very incredible job. And if that's what we got to keep doing, that's what we'll keep doing, you know. And if I can keep inspiring by doing what I do and, you know, we can see more of future alleys coming through disability sport, Wales wanting to do sports, wanting to be at the Paralympic Games, then, you know, I guess I have to keep sticking around and uh, fighting for gold medals. <laughs> I, yes, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> also, well, you've perfectly led into this question, talking about future Alid. Let's talk to past Alid. Um, what advice would you give to younger Alid? <laughs> um, I think it would be just to chill out and enjoy the journey. Um, you know, after the first time I won was 2012. After that, I was like, right, I need to show everyone I'm not a one trick pony and I can win the world champs next year. Won double goals in 2013. Then he was like, right, I want to win the Europeans the year after. So on and so forth. So, and here we are now going into Rio, uh, Tokyo 2021 and thinking about the world champs next year, um, you know, Paris 24. Um, I just think sometimes you need to step back and remember, you know, I got into this because I loved it. I enjoyed it. I couldn't wait to get off school, go down the track and throw things about. Do you know what I mean? And then sometimes it, it's, you forget that and it turns into a job um, because there is always expectation of you. You know, you, you are there as a role model and, and, and people expect things of you. So, you know, I end up putting my pressure on myself. Do you know what I mean? I always put pressure on myself to deliver then as well. I always want to go out on these big stages and throw a world record and, and win the gold medal and, and show everyone that, you know, I'm the best. So for me, I don't, I would, if I could go back, it'd be like, just enjoy it. Every single stepping stone, you know, and now, you know, I, I'm trying to adopt it 
And when I go out there, you'll see me kind of step back, take a look around, take the stadium in. And I'll do the same things even if, even if they're empty in Tokyo. I'll always take everything in and just enjoy the moment because uh, not many people get the opportunity to do what I do. Um, and, you know, I still consider myself to have a dream job. So it's important to, you know, enjoy it, have fun because everything else is irrelevant if you're not happy, right? Yes. Totally agree. I think I have the dream job. I'm going to be biased because I get to talk to exactly. people like you. But exactly. Your job and, and, and you are, you're extremely happy. So that's all that matters. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, I'm not saying I wouldn't want to go through things that might be really fun too, but <laughs> I don't know that I'd be as good at it as you. So I'll stay on this side. <laughs> but also, Alan, thank you so much. This was perfect. I appreciate you coming on, taking the time to share your story. No, thank you very much for having me. It's been lovely and, um, you know, raising awareness and, and now you're going to come and watch in the Paralympic Games and support people. That's awesome. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, what, that's what we want to do as well. Definitely. Alec, thank you so very much for coming on the show to share your story. And we're sending you all the best as you go to compete in Tokyo. Stay tuned for our last episode of Adventures with Aggie and Disability Sport Wales feature with Olivia Breen coming to you on Thursday morning. Thank you.